Hello everybody, a warm welcome to the Hada Cameron channel and welcome to a new video. And today's video is going to be me talking about my university, specifically my exams and how I think I'm doing. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people tell me uh, to make like update videos talking about how my university is going. I was short of video ideas today, so if you guys have any video ideas that you want me to do, anything to react to or maybe something you want me to talk about maybe political oh no uh, be sure to leave me a comment and i will take a look at your suggestion um, and i will most likely not do it because your idea will be crap but it's okay <laughs> no i will i'll take it into consideration guys because i am a good youtuber so how has my university been going you may want to know so why does this feel like a undateable episode. I can't speak, I'm so tired today, but I finished my autumn semester of my chemistry degree course, my second year, uh, just last month, uh, obviously December, the end of autumn, and we had open book exams. Uh, so pretty much with my degree, uh, I'm doing a master's degree in chemistry, uh, and the way that it works is the first year, uh, in which I got first in, uh, isn't worth anything. Uh, great. The second year is worth 20% of my degree, so that's the year I'm doing now. And the third and fourth year are both worth 40% each. Now that's annoying because in the first year I got first. I did really well. Uh, so the fact that that won't be worth anything is really frustrating. But I guess the content was easier, so maybe that's why. Um, so with this year so far, um, I had two exams and also my first section of labs. Um, so the two modules that I was examined on were modules that only lasted one semester, that semester being the autumn semester. So for me, that was um, principles and analytical chemistry, the, the subjects of as dry as it sounds, to be honest, <laughs> and also um, sustainable chemistry. Um, at the same time, I was also studying the non-optional modules and they're worth double as much um, and they also will be examinated and I'll have exams on them at the end of the year. Uh, so I've not finished the modules, um, but with the principles in analytical chemistry and also sustainable chemistry, I was able to have exams on them simply because uh, they were only one semester long. So obviously I'll do the exam on it at the end of that semester. Uh, the exams were open book and how that works pretty much is uh, you get a day to complete them um, and you know you can look at your notes and honestly you know I expected the first one uh, the principles in analytical chemistry to be much harder than the sustainable chemistry module uh, in terms of the exam and I was completely wrong uh, the first exam I did you have a whole day to do it which seems really like nice. I think a lot of people are gonna look at that and go, oh, so let's get this straight. You have an exam paper to complete uh, and you get a whole day to do it. That's ages, you know, you can just get every single question right. You can just search them all up. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> you literally can't. Oh, I mean, you can, but you won't find the answers. You won't find any answers. And the questions are made so much harder because they know that you can search, you know, the answers up and you're allowed to do that. Uh, the way that they do it, the way that the questions are set out at least it's so difficult uh, to not revise and then look for the answers on the internet and actually get a good grade you need to know the content throughout you know to get a good mark in them so uh, it's, it's not very good but in the principles in analytical chemistry i found that uh, exam relatively easy i was quite good at it i felt uh, besides one question which was completely bizarre like the way that my lectures have worked they've not been live lectures uh they have been just uploaded all at once uh, and students are given the responsibility of you know being able to process the workload like how many lectures are you meant to do a week how are you meant to revise the lectures like over what time period that's the student's responsibility being in lockdown uh, which is a bit bizarre but okay so pretty much, uh, you know, I was looking at the lecture notes for this one question because I really had no idea on how to do it. I think it's thermal spectroscopy, if anyone flipping cares. Uh, and honestly, the lecture video on that topic was so bad. Like, it had no relevancy to the question. Like, 
I understand what thermal spectroscopy is, but the actual question I did on it was so AIDS. It was worth like 10% uh, of the exam as well, which was really frustrating because the only lecture video on it, uh, like we have workshop questions, for example, which are questions uh, that was like four or five different workshops. And th these are just, you know, question sheets effectively. Uh, and I did all of them and not one of them, you know, was on this topic. So not only was there no questions ever done on it, uh, no answers, of course, either on it. And, you know, on top of that, the lecture was crap as well. So it was just really unfortunate. I really felt like I just missed out on 10 marks. I feel like I might have clawed a few marks, but it just wasn't pleasant. The, the other part of the exam was, to be fair, the exam itself was quite good. Uh, I revised a lot for that topic because it's a hard topic. Uh, the second topic, not so much. Sustainable chemistry, I kind of thought on the back burner, which was a huge mistake. Actually, it wasn't so much a huge mistake because when I did the exam, I felt like I did it good. Um, but the last question was so crap. That exam dragged on so much. Like, you know, these papers are both worth 100 marks and they took hours, absolutely hours. I spent about six hours altogether on the principles in analytical chemistry. And I think the reason why I spent so long on that exam was not because I couldn't do it quickly, but instead because the questions were so much harder than they normally would be if, you know, they were uh, just in an exam hall. And they do that on purpose. They make the questions harder uh, to ensure that, um, you know, you kind of get the same grade distribution as you would get if, you know, the papers were sat inside an exam hall with specific, you know, like a two hour, three hour time period limit. You know, they just want the grades to be similar. They don't want people on the, across the board doing much better just because it's an open book exam. So they try to compensate for the advantage you get of being able to search up, you know, notes and stuff. They just make the questions harder. That's literally what they do. But all in all, I felt like them two exams went well. Uh, I'm only aiming for a 2-1. I, I don't expect to get a first. I, I don't even care to aim for a first, to be quite frankly honest. Uh, and the reason why is because I'm not that intelligent. <laughs> I feel like you have to be incredibly intelligent to get a first. And for me, I'm just I'm just not there, you know, with chemistry. Like, I, I want to use my chemistry degree. I have aspirations that I need to get a 2-1 to do so. And I'll talk about that in a different video if you guys are curious uh, for, to hear what I want to say. Um, but pretty much when it comes to like my degree, a 2-1 would be sufficient. Uh, to, to get a 2-1, you need about 60%. And I feel like on one of the modules, uh, I probably got about 70%. I think on the principles of analytical chemistry, I probably got about 70%. And on the, uh, on the sustainable chemistry, I believe I quite easily got at least 50. So that will balance out to about 60%, which is a 2-1. So that's, a, that's what I expect to get. Uh, I'll release my actual results because I know you guys are curious. Watch me get 20 marks, <laughs> and then 20 marks in the other one. Jesus Christ, let's hope that doesn't happen. The problem I have is my inorganic chemistry labs. So my labs um, are worth 30 credits. Uh, the two modules I was talking about are worth 10 credits each. And my non-optional modules are worth 20. Uh, so they're not worth too much. But the my whole labs across the board are worth 30 credits, uh, inorganic, physical, and organic. Now, the physical labs that I was meant to have have been delayed, obviously because of COVID. So I don't even know if we'll be able to do all three you know, different types of labs. Uh, I hope that I get to do physical because physical is my strength. I'm very good at physical labs. I'm abysmal at inorganic labs and I'm okay at organic labs. Uh, being able to do physical and inorganic would be considerably better than doing inorganic and organic, which I feel like is probably what's going to happen because I'm not that good at organic. I'm much better at physical. And uh, the reason why is because you do the lab reports in the actual lesson uh, and the lab reports are much less intensive. Uh, I don't know if, as long as it stays to how they were done in the first year, which I imagine they are, because the whole point of the first year is to prepare you for the second year. Uh, when I do lab reports for inorganic and organic, you have to write it from scratch. But when it comes to physical, it's like a template. Like it's really easy to get good marks if you've done well in the experiment. The experiments themselves are easier anyway. So I really hope I get to do physical. Well, my inorganic labs really didn't go well. 
uh, I missed two lab sessions. Uh, I think everyone in my uh, year missed one lab session because of COVID, uh, because the term ended sooner than it should have. But I had a timetable issue. I don't know if I've talked about this. I think I have. I don't think I actually made that into a video, though. So you guys would have never seen it. But I have talked about it in the premises of like a video in the in the uh, precursor of making a video. Um, and effectively what happened is I was going out. I was getting ready to do a lab. Uh, and I checked on my timetable last minute. My lab sessions were every two weeks. So, you know, last fortnight I had an exam. Fortnight! I don't know why I said that. I'm crazy, it seems. Uh, but because I had, you know, a lab two weeks ago, I assumed that I had a lab that week. So I got ready, ready to go, and I commute an hour to university. I was leaving at like half seven. I checked last minute, and my lab session's not there on the timetable. Quite frankly, I'm not going to waste eight quid, you know, to go there and back to uni because it's before nine, so the buses cost more money. Uh, you know, the buses I use have a monthly cap uh, and because obviously I'm only going like once every two weeks, there isn't a monthly cap. So that means that I'm paying like eight quid to go there and back uh, because that's the daily cap. If you go before nine, if you go after nine, I think the daily cap is like six pounds, but normally the monthly cap is like 50 quid. So you normally don't pay any extra uh, when you go every single day. If you were to go one day, that you were not meant to go. Like, it doesn't cost any extra. But for me, if I went uh, to a lab, you know, when the lab isn't even on, that's just nine quid, eight quid wasted. So it's not particularly good. So I look at my calendar, my timetable, and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way it's wrong. Like, why would it be wrong? And then I go to the next week, and then I have a lab session. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, they've just moved it. So it's every three weeks for some, for some random reason. So I missed that lab session, because that was an actual lab session. And the week after I get ready to go and it's not there on the calendar. And then I go to the timetable and I look at the week before and the lab session that mysteriously disappeared uh, was there. So pretty much what I was saying to me is I missed the lab session. So because of that, I missed out crucially on my second experiment. The inorganic chemistry lab that I did was formed of three experiments. So not only did I miss out fully on experiment two, uh, I think I was about halfway done uh, but, you know, you can't do much with a half-completed inorganic experiment because you've not made the end product. You know, you've made, like, a minor product that you need to make into the, you know, the desired product at the end of the process. So it wasn't worth anything. And on top of that, my experiment one, I didn't have the critical analysis that I needed, uh, meaning spectroscopy. If you guys know anything about chemistry, uh, spectroscopy is just, like, measuring what your compound is, like, processing the data of your compound effectively so it can identify what it is and because of that for experiment one I missed out on marks I talked to my lab convener whatever they're called uh, and they scrapped experiment two for me so I'm only marked on experiment one and three and experiment one I was missing so much and all in all I think I got 45 percent on experiment one which is dismal it's really bad uh, I, I feel like I've done considerably better on experiment three. Uh, we also had to do one lab report on any experiment of our choice, except for two, obviously, for me. And I did it on experiment three. Experiment three was my best experiment. So I feel like I probably got about 70% on experiment three in terms of the data, because you get marked on the data of each experiment and then the final lab report that you do on one of the experiments so I think I got probably about 70% on experiment three. Uh, and I think on the lab report, I might have just, just got 70% as well. So I think all in all, I think it's going to be down to the wire. I just don't think it's going to be a very good result, though. I feel like I'm not going to achieve the two one that I wanted just because I did so awful in the first experiment. The only thing good about this module is there was a pre-lab for each three of the experiments. And I really wonder if the experiment to uh, pre-lab, I will get the marks for it because it's not part of the data sheet, which I couldn't complete because I didn't do the experiment. But the pre-lab is just questions. It's just a quiz. And I got five out of five, four and a half out of five, and four out of five. So I'll get the four out of five and the four and a half out of five because they were on the experiments that were counted because I was able to do them. Experiment one, I wasn't able to finish, but at least I got you know half the data sheet completed. But I wonder if I can get the five marks I got 
for the experiment two pre-lab, even though experiment two isn't counted, like the data sheet isn't counted. I really hope I can, because if I can, that five marks is going to be crucial and probably quite pivotable uh, in, in helping me get to the 2-1 boundary, because that will boost my uh, my percentage by 2 or 3%. That's a considerable push. You know, 3% on 45 is 48%. That's almost 50%. Okay, that's a big push. Uh, so all in all, it's stress. It's a lot of stress. Um, I'm just so livid that the first year doesn't mean anything. That, it really infuriates me because I did so well. I got first in the first year. Uh, even the labs, I got like 70% in. So it's just unfortunate that that won't translate to anything uh, significant on my degree. But at the end of the day, you know, I guess like... I learned stuff from it. I don't know. I think it, I, I think I need to really focus on my for future exams. Uh, but obviously, lockdown's really tough. You know, the, the mental health issues that I've suffered because of lockdown and because of COVID are ridiculous. And it's got to a point where they're so bad that you don't even recognise that they're bad, which is really bad. It's really bad when it hits that stage. But I think we're coming out of it. You know, like. I don't think lectures will return to normal until next year, which is fine. Um, but I, with my modules, like my my core modules, I'm very good at. Like that, that's my strength. Like I'll be looking to get seventy percent in all three if I can. Uh, so if I can get, you know, seventy percent in all three, even if I do bad in the labs, like even for inorganic labs, if I was to average 60 percent, which is probably what I will get, I think that's the margin I'll be at. The physical labs, if, if we're able to do them, I should easily be able to get 70, 80% in them. So I think it will all balance out to a 2 1, which is what I'm looking for. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Smash like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new today. Uh, again, if you guys have any video ideas you want me to do, be sure to leave me a comment and I will take them into consideration. Thank you guys for watching. Hope everyone has a good day. I hope if anyone's struggling with university, and I know it's so stressful and so shit. I know everyone's life is so bad right now, you know, just know that it will get better. Okay, it will get better. We have to, we have to follow the rules though. Everyone has to follow the rules, do not break the rules, because if we break the rules, we break lockdown rules. And I know sometimes it's so easy to do so, it's so hard to keep following them. You know, we're just going to be in this mess for longer. So, you know, I'm going to be uploading every week now, because I actually kind of forgot how much I love making videos. And that's what mental health does. When you have bad mental health, you forget what you enjoy and you spend all your time on things that you don't really enjoy like you just waste your time you just watch tiktok you just watch youtube you don't really do what you enjoy doing uh you know you, you stop talking to people you like it's just that's how it is so i hope you guys you know if, if you're in a position of having bad mental health you know try and really think about what something you may have done before try and think about something that you may have done before that you may have stopped all of a sudden that you used to enjoy and try and do it again. You know, I don't know if this makes any sense, but you know, everyone struggles with mental health. My point is that we're all in this together. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching and take care.